Vanessa, welcome back to the latest episode of ASEAN News. Malaysia scraps mandatory death penalty and abolish natural life prison terms. Malaysia's parliament passed sweeping legal reforms to remove the mandatory death penalty, trim the number of offences punishable by death, and abolish natural life prison sentences. The government's decision regarding the abolition of the mandatory death penalty is seen as the right step in creating a legal system that is dynamic, progressive, and relevant to current needs. Malaysia has had a moratorium on executions since 2018 when it first promised to abolish capital punishment entirely. Under the amendment passed on Monday, alternatives to the death penalty include wiping and imprisonment of between 30 to 40 years. The new jail term will replace all previous provisions that call for imprisonment for the duration of the offender's natural life. Life imprisonment sentences defined by Malaysian law as fixed term of 30 years will be retained. Cambodian goldsmiths make bullet casting jewelry to promote peace. In a small workshop in the Cambodian capital, goldsmith Toi Won Chanta sifts through piles of bullet casings which he will turn into jewelry. Upcycling something which is used in war into something beautiful and peaceful is a commitment Chanta made for himself in the memory of his father. <laughs> The purpose of making this jewelry is that, firstly, because I'm a victim of the war, as a Cambodian who lost family members from it, and now the world as it war too. I make this to show the world doesn't want war, separation, and we all want peace. Secondly, it helps create jobs in the community. The bullets of mainly AK-47 and M16s are collected from the shooting range around town, as well as from various military training grounds. The casing deemed safe for use are melted and poured into molds and Chanta and his staff shape the metal into bracelets, earrings and rings. His signature design is that of the room wall flower, the fragrant bloom is a symbol of Cambodian culture. His creations have had some traction from overseas and he exports some of his work, but he mostly sells his creation at local flea and other markets. The pieces cost between 5 to 20 US dollars depending on the design and work involved. Indonesia and Russia sign an extradition agreement in efforts to combat cross-border crimes. Indonesia and Russia signed an extradition agreement with the Southeast Asian country's law minister, welcoming a move that he said should strengthen efforts to combat cross-border crimes ranging from money laundering to cybercrime. The treaty was signed by Indonesia's law minister Yasona Laoli and Russia's justice minister Konstantin Chiuchenko in a ceremony held on the resort island of Bali. This agreement is very important because this has really helped us to take legal action for the extradition of perpetrators of transnational crimes like cybercrime, money laundering, drugs, corruption and others. With this extradition treaty, it is easy for us to have MLA, mutual legal assistance and extradition as well. It makes it very easy for us to cooperate in law between countries. Indonesia had had political ties with Russia since 1950 and its relations have remained good despite the war in Ukraine. Cambodians hold annual ox cart race before Khmer New Year. Kung Vichet, a 30-year-old ox cart driver who frequently participates and won the race this year, said the event helps preserve the carts that stem from ancient Khmer culture and reminds residents of the necessity to feed the oxen. The event was organized by the Provincial Department of Culture in collaboration with the Youth Federation of Cambodia and the Provincial Oxen Associations at Rokatom Commune, Khmer Mon City and the Kompon Spiu Province. There were 39 contestants participating in the race this year, with a large audience turnout including local residents, sports enthusiasts from neighboring provinces, as well as foreign tourists. The carts were historically used for many festivals in Cambodia, including the Buddhist Kathen ceremony and weddings, where they were used primarily to carry goods and people. Later, they began to be used for ox cart races in an effort of preservation and remembrance of older traditions. South Korea and Indonesia hold fourth joint meeting discuss bilateral cooperation. 
South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin and his Indonesian counterpart Retno Marsuri held the fourth joint commission meeting in Seoul. According to the Seoul's Foreign Ministry, the two ministers were expected to discuss bilateral cooperation schemes over various sectors including trade, investment, resources, energy and infrastructure. During her Seoul visit, Marsudi also met South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol and delivered a letter from Indonesian President Joko Widodo. Indonesia and South Korea marked the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic ties this year. Japanese Navy destroyer visits Cambodian port. Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force destroyer arrived in Cambodia for a three-day visit aimed at strengthening relations between the two countries. So this ship is uh, from Japan, uh, straight from Japan, yes. And this is a friendly visit uh, of the uh, Japanese uh, Maritime Self-Defense Forces. Uh, among the about 200 uh, members, about 40 is a new graduate from Japan uh, National uh, uh, the Defense Academy. So they, the, their principal aim is to, to enhance the friendship uh, between uh, Cambodian Navy and the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. The Japan Maritime Self-Defense Forces visit came more than a week after China and Cambodia held military naval exercises for the first time in Cambodian waters, which began on March 19. The exercises will be held until April 8, 2023. China vows to make high-quality hallmark of cooperation with Singapore. Chinese President Xi Jinping said China stands ready to strengthen strategic communication and deepen strategic alignment with Singapore and earnestly make high quality the hallmark of cooperation between the two countries. China and Singapore are two important partners and their relationship is forward-looking, strategic and demonstrative. Meanwhile, the Singaporean Prime Minister expressed the hope that his visit can inject fresh momentum for bilateral relations and push China-Singapore cooperation to produce more outcomes in various fields. The two sides had candid and in-depth exchanges on major country relations and international and regional issues of common concern. Thank you everyone. Enjoy your holy weekend ahead. Stay safe and stay healthy.